Hi everyone, I'm just doing, recording a video going through what assignment 2 is going to look like for you. Uh, by the end of this video you should have a, a good idea of what you need to do, what you need to prepare, and how to actually go about uh, doing assignment 2. So let's jump into it. First off, I think it's very important that we go through the rubric. Um, so this is the practice quiz page. Everything you see on the real quiz page should be very similar, but this practice quiz has been set up for you guys so that you can make sure your internet connection's good and make sure that you understand the format. So I'm going to expand this out just to make it easier to read. So in this quiz, you'll be asked to combine two images into one P5 sketch. So you'll get two questions and they'll have two different simulus, so two different images, and you'll be asked to combine these two designs into one. So getting prepared, uh, do this practice quiz, uh, this page here, as well as yeah, testing your connection and your computer, making sure that you can undertake it. Um, and take this practice quiz a few times before attempting the assessment just to make sure you're ready. Uh, this quiz is open book, which means you should have quite a lot of things. There are a few things that you can prepare so that to give you the best chances to get a higher mark. Um, P5 reference is one. Let's uh, pull that up. So the P5 reference page, you should probably just have this open. It's also a good idea to have the JavaScript reference open, uh, just in case you forget how to use uh, JavaScript things. Alright, back to this tab. I'd also recommend uh, having a snippet library. So this uh, isn't written here, but you'll see me as I go through the demonstration, I will be probably looking at the snippet library a few times. So I've made my own. Uh, let's just pull up the editor. Uh, you should have access to this snippet library as well because it is in the Designing with AI Lab account. As you can see, I've just filled it with a bunch of general functions that I'm probably going to um, encounter or need. One of them is uh, draw a grid array. That's your simple uh, nested, nested for loop with the position sort of already worked out. So the idea behind this is that if I'm like, oh, okay, I need a, a 2D array, I can come and grab this function and then call that function and sort of edit it as I need it. So things like border, might, you want, might want to edit there. You might want to, um, yeah, set, set uh, different values and things like that. Uh, there's also a polar array, which is uh, sort of what we're familiar with, with the sine and cos functions, finding coordinates on a circle. And that's, that's that one. Uh, you'll probably have to edit this one to take into account whether your angle mode is set to radians or degrees or whatever you'd like. Um, a couple for making random colors from either a list or just a random high saturation color. Obviously you'd change these values if you wanted more muted tones. But yeah, they should give me the structure that I need so that I don't have to write everything. Now you could uh, start with this snippet list, use this snippet list and Add, add some of your own, create your own snippet list of things that you think you might need, uh, and that's a good idea. Uh, I should also mention that when you are taking things from other people's snippets, or maybe you found something on the internet, because let's face it, open book does mean open internet, you should attribute. So for example, if I was grabbing uh, this function from here, I would just add a comment up the top saying, uh, I got this from, and I'd copy the URL, and, or I should say, I copied this. And that's, it, that's probably enough. Uh, then your marker will know that you aren't trying to cheat, uh, and that you are just uh, 
attributing properly to the, uh, the original author. Uh, of course, if you did want to change this around a lot, you could instead say, I modified this. And that will give us an idea that uh, we'll, we'll go and have a look at the original source and see what kind of things that you've changed. And that's how we'll uh, evaluate your coding skills. I also would recommend that if you are using somebody else's functions, you should at least add some more comments just to explain that you have an idea of what that code is doing. Uh, and that, that gives us sort of uh, the ability to mark you. So comments are, serve two purposes, as we've talked about in the lectures, oh, sorry, in the tutorials. So they are useful for giving people information, um, and they, for us, in this course in particular, they demonstrate that you understand what you have written or copied or modified. Uh, but you can also use them, particularly in this instance, to explain more, um, sort of give some justification to the choices you've made, uh, and that, that will give you a marker, sort of make your life, the life easier for your marker. Um, so yes, if you feel like something isn't clear and could be made clear, put it in a comment, absolutely. Alright, so what you'll need is a reliable internet connection, and uh, you might need access to the VPN and use the practice quiz to just make sure that you have a good working environment uh, before you get started. Uh, just one thing before I move on, getting prepared, another good thing to have on hand is a notepad and paper. Uh, and this is just for sort of sketching out things that you might want, you know, breaking up elements and thinking about how you're going to do things. So yes, I would recommend having a pen pencil one. So once you have started the quiz or the practice quiz, you should probably work in the online P5 editor and regularly save your work. This means turning on the auto save feature is probably a really good idea. So I've got a sketch open here. You should probably save it first, give it a better name. Um, and then make sure that you have autosave on. And that way, if your browser crashes, you should be able to open up Canvas again, get into your quiz again, and you should be able to open up your work and make sure you, and that, that will sort of prevent you from losing too much work and losing too much time. So uh, definitely have a look at the FAQs. Uh, if something does go wrong during your quiz, that will probably be covered here under the FAQs. So make sure you're familiar with what you should do in the in the um, situation that something does go wrong. Now I should go over the rubric. So before you could probably get away without looking at the rubric, because the last assessment one was all multiple choice, you didn't really need to look at the rubric, but I can tell you now that this is the criteria that we assessed, which was your ability to code, or your ability to understand coding concepts. The same thing applies to this course, I mean, sorry, to this quiz, A2, uh, but now we're going, to, because we're actually going to be looking at your code, we do need to be able to work out what's yours and what's attributed, what's been modified. And so comments and good variable names are very important here, uh, and yes, you're, so this one essentially assesses your ability to code. Have a good read through this, make sure you understand what you, what's needed of you uh, in order to get the highest marks. Now this second criteria, design quality, this one uh, is a new one that's added for this assignment. Uh, in assignment three, you'll see there'll be three criterias, and one of them will be creativity. This is a sort of a halfway point where we are assessing your design, um, and so you are meant to be a little bit creative in terms of how you work things out or how you uh, process the information uh, and turn it into something new, which is your your, abil your ability to sort of synthesize a new creation. 
So we are going to be looking at uh, how you implement aesthetic and human-centered design qualities and also you're, you should uh, use those comments to make it clear what you've done uh, if, it, if you think it's not going to be uh, immediately obvious to your markers. Alright, so I think that should be it. We should be ready to go. Alright, let's get started, shall we? I'm going to start a timer just to make sure I'm not taking too long. Alright, so as you can see all the information is still here when you start the quiz, along with the rubric. So the two images that I've been given are this one and this one. Now, I'm going to start by breaking down the images into sort of their components or what I'm going to take from each. So, um, where can I do that? This text box is where you'd paste your answer. Um, so I'm actually going to do this in comments uh, within my editor. Alright, let's have a look at that first one. The first image. Got sort of these well they are two D shapes. They're very they've got parallel lines. They're quite blocky block colours. So I'll, I'll put that down. Block colours. Um Parallelograms, I believe they're called. Parallelograms. Don't know if I spelled that correctly. Who cares? Um, they, and I think like what this is doing is it's like a they're two D shapes, but they're alluding to this sort of idea of a three D environment. So maybe that's something. So two D, oops, not at D, two D, alluding to three D. 30 forms. Okay, now this second image. Actually, one more thing I want to add to this. It's a, it's a nice palette. I like that palette. If nice is the best thing that you can say about something, then, you know, it's not very descriptive. <laughs> but I like it. Uh, now this one, we've got these sort of concentric circles. Concentric circles. Um, it's quite sort of interrupted or intermittent. So intermittent arcs. Uh, more full arcs, more full circles to the outside. So going from that, I think I've, I um, should probably also talk about the color. It's very monochrome. And that's just sort of my, my uh, immediate thoughts when I look at those two images. So what am I going to try to create with that? Let's, let's start to take things that um, that would would work together and start to think of our design and what we're going to make out of it. So I would like to use the uh, the nice palette uh, from the first one because I I do like that palette. For, so I'll use first image palette. That's not really much of a design decision. Let me spell palette. Is that it? Anyway, who cares? It doesn't matter. <laughs> Spelling doesn't matter. As long as context is there and I know what you're saying, that should be all that matters. Um, I do like this idea of 2D alluding to 3D. So I will, I will try to include that. So I wanted to allude to a 3D form that isn't really there. 
I'll probably use these um, circles and arcs. So into whoops, intermittent arcs, and I'll so I'll, I'll take the form of the second image, I think. Um, and I should also make those concentric. Intermittent concentric arcs. All right, so I think we've got that sort of. This is the just general makeup of what I'm going to do. Cool. Uh, I'm going to use a color picker tool. I actually have one in my toolbar. Um, it's called Instant Eyedropper. Um, and I, what I do is I just click on it and then I can view uh, colors. So I can grab this green. You can't actually see that, unfortunately. But I can grab the green, the hex code, and I'll just start putting those in. Palette. Uh, that one. That's the dark green. You don't have to write all of this out, but I'm going to need to use these. So that's going to be more useful for me just to have them all in the sketch. Uh, this gray is it's kind of a halfway gray. Well, not halfway. Uh, now I'll grab the orange. Somewhere around there. So I've got the dark green, the grey, the orange, and now the sort of sky blue colour. I'll grab that next. Cool. So that's my palette sorted. I can come up here and grab these. Now, going back to my snippets library, I think... Well, okay, first off, I should save before I get too deep into it. And I'm going to rename this to... Uh, A2 attempt 1. Well, it's actually practice, so I'll call it practice A2 attempt 1. Yep. And I'll make sure that I've got auto save on. Yep, and I do. Good. It means everything that I do will sort of be in a safe place. Alright, so I'm going to pull up that snippet, so I'm just going to open up a new editor window and open up my snippet library. Ideally, you should have these. Uh, oh, I'm going to delete that one. Uh, ideally, you should already have your snippet library open. I accidentally closed it, but it's not too hard for me to find it again. That's the beauty of saving your snippet library. Now, I think I'm going to use this polar array um, because I I see myself drawing arcs in sort of a on and off uh, color thingy. I don't know how to explain it, but You'll see what I'm doing. So I'll use that, so I'm going to paste that in here. And don't forget attribution. I copied from here. And then I'll describe what this does. I used this to make concentric Uh, well, not concentric, more like uh, radial arcs. Cool. Uh, what's next? Uh, now I think I should kind of sketch out my idea. Now you'll be using pen and paper, but I'm just going to be using paint. Uh, let me, sorry, switch over my recording to paint. There we go. So how am I going to get these concentric shapes to look 3D? Let's I'll turn the fill off first. And I want a solid color outline. So assuming I've got this sort of circle. And it's going to be interrupted by sort of these. Maybe I need a bit of a bigger brush. Oh, that didn't work. Plus. Control plus. Yeah, there we go. So it's kind of going to be interrupted a lot. But how am I going to make it 3D? Well, I think I should probably put 
some sort I should draw the shape a little bit bigger maybe I could probably use scale to do that just so it looks like it's got a bit of a shadow so for example if I'm gonna be using oops sorry wrong color so that's gonna be my circle and then I draw oops I've done it again now I draw it's gonna be hard to line these up and I kinda want a darker color Check that on custom colors. If I put a dark one on the outside, what's that going to look like? Okay. Well, what if instead sort of offset it? So it's the same size. Yeah, that could work. Now I'll draw another circle, and this one's going to be wider. Oops. Lighter gray circle. Let's try that out. And I'll put that on the inside. And that kind of makes gives it a bit of a bezel sort of thing. So I'll put that into my um, into my comments. Because I'm not sure if that's exactly going to trans... Am I recording? Yes, I am. Good. <laughs> Sorry, doing a quiz and recording at the same time is pretty hard. Um, bear with me. Alright, so... Back to browser. Yes, there we go. Now, I'm, I'm, prob I'm, not, I'm not sure if that idea is going to translate, so I'm going to put it up here. Uh, the circular forms will have will be repeated to the left and right with uh, lighter and darker colors to allude to the 3d form and that way if it doesn't necessarily come across and it's just kind of a failure at least the marker will have an idea of what you're trying to do, and that's worth something. Actually, that should follow that. Yep. Yeah. Cool. I think we've generally written everything. Now let's get some stuff on the page. Um, I'm going to be playing with arcs. So, as you know, we should definitely pull up the reference if we're not familiar with something. And I'm going to pull up the reference for arc. And because it's just a really quick way to get something on the paper, I'm just going to grab maybe this. Sorry, not the paper, but the canvas. And I'll put that inside draw. Tidy my code. See what we get. Okay, we got a little arc up there in the corner. Uh, now, going back to this, I'm going to have a look at the syntax, the X and the Y. Okay, that's where it starts. Let's... Oops, I keep jumping back to snippets. I'm going to move that over there. So, I'm going to put this at 0, 0, and I'm going to do a translate, because that's probably going to make things a bit easier in the end. How are we doing? We're 15 minutes in. I'm not making great time, but at least it uh, should be okay. Now, this would be size. It's probably a good, good place for a variable. And we'll go a bit bigger. Let's say 200. And I'm going to replace this size. And that with size. Oops. Have a look at that. Let's turn the stroke weight up, get the uh, stroke weight. Let's go to like 5, I guess. Yeah, that's, that's probably interesting enough, I think. Um, I'm probably going to have to do this a few times, so I'm going to turn this into its own function. And it's going to be my arc function. Oh, no, I've already got a function called arc, I'll call it draw arc. Now, if 
I want to take in the size. And I'll probably randomize these values so it's just around the circle. That's probably a quick way to do this. So I will grab all of this, cut it and paste it into here. And then I'll go draw arc 200 just to make sure I've got the same thing. Don't need to redefine that anymore. Oh, move translate up into here. I think we're always going to be going from the center out because we're doing concentric circles. Yep, cool. Now these, I guess I will switch to angle mode degrees. And these values, I guess I want a random value between 0 and 360 degrees. Well, I don't need to type 0, do I? I can just go 360. And I'll do the same for the other one. Now, because I know the way that arc works, I think that if it's got negative values, it, like if this value is higher than this value, it should still draw an arc. Let's try that out a few times. Oh. Let's turn the frame rate down so we can get a good look at that. Uh, let's go with 5. Yeah, cool. I, I'm going to ignore this bit. I think it'll take too long. More full circles to the outside. I'm just going to keep it quite random. Alright, so that should work. Now we need a for loop to draw a bunch of these arcs. So, I can go back to my snippet library and see if I've got a for loop. Doesn't look like I do have a single for loop thing. Oh well, for loops aren't that hard to write, but maybe that's something you want to add to your snippet library. Let i equals zero, i is less than, I don't know, let's go up to 200. 200 can be our biggest. No, you know what? Our canvas size is 400 by 400. Let's go to 350. Just try. And I++. plus plus. So we've got values between 0 and 349. And we're going to use those to draw arc. And we sort of don't need to map that. Let's just try I. See what we get. And I'm going to slow the frame rate right down. Oh, maybe a bit too full, I think, because these are pixels. Yeah, so we'll draw, instead we'll do a hundred of them, see how that looks, and I will map the value of i. So I'm going to go let size equal map, mapping i. I know that that's going from 0 to 99, and I want it to be of a size, let's start at size 2, maybe and go up to size 350. Oops. Let's have a look. Size. Test it. So what we get. Ooh, that's looking very similar to our image that we got before. I think if we got less uh, circles on the inside, we might be there. But our idea isn't to Rec recreate this one exactly. We're just being inspired by this and inspired by this. And we're combining these two ideas. Okay, but I think it is still a bit too dense, so let's define a variable because I'm going to need to change this in multiple places and we'll call this num arcs. Equals Go 30. Copy that into there. And also there, minus 1. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Maybe still a bit too dense, right? Go 20. Yeah, I think that should work. Now I kind of like that is this is generating something on the fly. You can make, it's up to you whether you want to make your things static or whether you want to keep them animated. It's up to you whether you want to add some sort of interaction. 
Actually, that's probably not a bad idea, you know what? I don't have a snippet for that. I probably should have written one, and maybe you should too. But if mouse pressed... Uh, I think we want to run... What can we loop? And then if I chuck a no loop at the end of draw, I'll at least get one loop out of it. Get rid of frame rate one, we don't need that anymore. Let's see what happens. Yep, doesn't loop anymore. And if I click, cool. All right, that's a good one. All right, now, need to get that kind of like offset look that I was going for in paint. So I'm going to put a darker shade on the left and a lighter shade on the right. Oh, but let's get our colors in first, I think. Um, I'm going to add color to this. And I'll call that cull. Now I need to make my cull. Um, I've already got all of my palette up here. Why don't I make an array for that? Cull array. Whoops. Let. Don't forget your keywords. Cull array. Equal. Yep. Sign is empty. And I'll fill it inside here. Just because I want access to the color function. Cull array equals. And I will fill this with color. And I'll go with this one. Now, if using color, I need to put these in strings. Oops, that works. Cool. And remember, if you're not familiar with the function, you can always look it up in the reference. So I'm going to copy this. I've got four, four colors, so I'll copy that one, two, three, four times. Get rid of the last comma. Now it's just a matter of copying this and putting it in here. Forgot to set color. Cool. So cull. Oh, oops. Got to find it. Let cull equal, and we're going to use our random function to grab from color a. Uh, you should remember this from this week's uh, tutorial. Random can take an array and pick a random element. So let's have a look at that. They're all black. What's going on? Oh, it's because I haven't actually implemented it into draw arc. Fair enough. Uh, no fill, that's right. I'm going to use stroke. And I'm going to be using color. Let's have a look at that. Cool. Those are the colors that I wanted. Bit interesting how it blocked up down there. Let's see a few more generations of it. Yeah, cool. I like it. Now, because I'm going to start translating inside draw arc, I'm definitely going to need push and pop. Sort of don't mind that no fill and stroke and all the stroke weight are only set in here, that's fine. Pop, pop. <laughs> cool. Now, I want to draw this arc three times. Uh, I'm going to grab this for loop, just drop it in there. Working a bit quick, cut and paste, tidy that up. Yep, cool. So, uh, I want it to be the same size, but just kind of slightly offset, right? Um, actually, maybe I don't need to translate. Yeah, I probably don't. Uh, I do need to define num arcs, though. So every arc has sort of two, or well three, I want to draw three arcs. So the first one will be a little bit to the left, second one will be zero, and then the third one will be a little bit to the right. So I'll use, change the X coordinate a little bit. I need a remap I, so I'll call this let X offset equal map 
I um, I is going from zero to num arcs minus one, and I want to offset it. Let's go with negative five. Yeah, stroke weight is five. That sort of makes sense. And five. So lowest value, highest value, makes sense to me. Now let's replace the x offset here. Interesting. It might be a little bit too cramped, but let's see what happens if we've got a little bit to work with. Now how am I going to get a darker and lighter image, or darker and lighter colour to the left and to the right? I'm going to have a look at my reference, and have a look and see what hue... I can actually get the hue of a colour. Yeah, that's awesome. Extract the hue value. Can I set brightness? Is that a thing I can do? Let's search for brightness. Cool. I can get the brightness. I can't set it though. Go back to the main reference page and see what we can play with in terms of color. Hello, creating and reading, brightness is there. Maybe I can set the brightness, although I probably don't want to mess with it too much like that. You know what, I think hue is probably going to do the trick. I'll grab the hue and then recreate a color, I think, uh, based on HSP, and I'll just bring the, sat mm, bring the brightness, maybe, I'll bring the saturation down a touch for both the left and the right colors and I'll make them just slightly less bright. I want the one side to be more closer to white and one side to be closer to black. Alright, so I'm going to use this hue function to grab the hue that is passed in. Alright, I'll do that here. Let... Uh, I probably can't call it hue because the hue function already exists. My hue equal color dot hue. Is that how it was called? Yes, it is. Oh no, it's not. It's hue with the color put into there. So not color dot hue. It's not a method of color, unfortunately. That'd be awesome. But there we go. So now I've got the hue. I need to create a new color. So let cull called this one color, so color is available. And I'm going, oh, forgot to set HSB mode, color mode, H HSB. All right, so I don't need to do that there, I can do that outside. And I can probably do this outside too only do it once. Anyway, so now I've got my hue, I can set the color equal to, and I can go my hue, so that means that they'll all have the same hue, and I probably want to map the hue, it gets from values from 0 to 100. Let uh, sat, short for saturation, equal map i uh, I'm going to copy this, just because it's a bit quicker. And then change the values that I need. And also let bright... Just call it bry. And I want to go from values of... If it's I... Well, the order that I'm drawing them in... Hang on, let me go back to paint. Right. One. All right, so the order that I'm drawing them in, hang on, can I zoom in on that? I'm going to be doing the darker one on that side and then the lighter one on that side. Yeah. The order that, but the order that I'm drawing them in isn't necessarily linear, so map's not going to work. 
All right, back to browser. Um, this is tough. I'm just going to use an if statement then. Yep. Okay. So I'll establish both of these. Just initialize them. And if, let's say, i equals equals zero, sat equals. So this is the first one we draw on the left, which is the dark one. I want the saturation to be down. So let's try 50. And actually, let's chuck a comment in here darker. And the brightness also needs to be down, so let's go to 50 as well. And then else if... And we will go with i equals equals... Smite. Oh, I've hit insert on my keyboard. I hate when that happens. Uh, 2. No, 0, 1, 2. Yep, that's right. I'll do that a tidy... Cool. Lighter. Now for the lighter ones, I also want the saturation to go down, but I think I want the brightness to stay high, so I'm going to keep that at 100. Oh, we don't seem to have too much of an effect. Oh, that's because I haven't set the color in here. So I actually want to move this line down. So the shortcut to do that, which should make it a bit quicker in your test, is to hold Control and Shift and press the arrow keys up and down, and that'll let you move lines around. Just a side tip. Uh, has that worked at all? No, I'm not seeing any effect. Let's instead draw just one arc. Let's see what we get. Oops, two. Oh, I haven't actually set the color properly. I forgot the saturation and the brightness. See, this is where a snippet would really help. I'm not seeing any change. I'm going to look up the color picker. Alright, so this is HSV, not quite the same as HSB, but let's just say we've got this color. Now let's see what happens if we turn up the saturation. We get a much bluer color, but we want a darker color, so what happens to it? So the saturation stays up for dark, but the value comes very far down. And for the lighter tone, saturation comes down. Let's go to 10. And let's keep you at 100 brightness. No, that's not right. Darker, so... But keep the saturation up. I'm not seeing any change. Why is that? Hmm. Well, currently I'm 25 or oh, 35 minutes into my attempt, and you've, you'll have two hours to do two exercises, so you'll have about an hour. But assuming, well, I did want to make this video a bit shorter. Um, if you do run into a problem like this, you can sort of put a comment in saying like, I couldn't get the color to be right and dark you know but obviously I'm gonna fix this because I do have the time and sort of lets your tutor know to look for something and they might be able to see that you have sort of used coding concepts to try to work it out and that's worth something now what is the issue oh strokes using the old color Oh, silly me. Alright, now these colors are terrible. Okay. Uh, let's 
take that back to like 90. Bring that back to 90. Okay. Uh, I'm going to need an uh, if state because as you can see, two of these colors are the same. Oops. I'll just kind of copy that line and throw that in just above it. And do the enclosing. Oh no, I don't need an enclosing bracket. That works. Um, I'll tidy that though. That doesn't look right to me. Is that seriously right? Yeah, I suppose it is. Uh, and this is the normal color. And saturation is 100 because with HSB normal mode, uh, you get 0 to 360 for the first value and 0 to 100 and 0 to 100. If you can't remember, look up the uh, reference. Now let's see what we get. They're always uh, sort of random as well. I do want to fix that so that the start and end points are always going to be in the same location. So, need another variable. Let start equal that. Let end equal that. Then we should end up with the same arc repeated. Yeah, cool. Still got the same color on the inside though. You know what? I don't like the size of this. Need more. It's too small. All right, cool. Now we can make it bigger as well. How was that done? That was here. So let's go to 950. Cool. And stroke weight. Let's crank that up to like 20. No, too much. Let's go to 15. Now that's going to have to be bigger. This color on the outside, the which should be darker, isn't still too bright. Oh no, it's still too... Well, I don't know what the issue is. 100, 100, that should be the normal color that's given. Is that close to that color? Oh, it's, for, it's, it's a lot darker, that color. Yep, I get the color of that coming in. Makes sense. Let's bring it down, see if we make any change. Oh. <laughs> the issue with copy-pasting is that you, if you copy-paste, always remember to change your values. Otherwise, yeah. Alright, so that, that darker color is looking pretty good. Let's take down the saturation of the lighter color. Cool. Now it's, I mean, it's not, a, it's not perfect, but it does kind of have this uh, sort of, it gives the illusion of a 3D effect. You're short of time, so you, we can't expect you to <laughs> uh, solve it exactly. But I do want to change the end caps of that arc. Uh, stroke, stroke cap. I knew it existed. I want, what's project? Default is round. I can go to square or project. Ah, oh, project this kind of makes it go outside. Okay. Oops, wrong one. Oh, I should have copied that. Stroke cap project. Oh, no, I was stuck. Stick with square. Uh, here's where I set the stroke weight, so I'll do it there. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Yeah. These are sort of interesting. I think our smallest uh, arcs are going to look a little bit strange, so we won't go from 2, we'll go from like 10. And maybe even higher, 20. 
Yeah, that's sort of interesting. I don't know. I feel like as the size gets bigger, so should the stroke weight and the offset. So I'm going to add that. Oh no, I've got an, already got a size. So maybe map the value of size to something. Let stroke width equal map. We'll map from size. What values are we getting? Twenty to nine fifty at the moment. So nine fifty. And I want the stroke width to go from something like maybe one out to let's go fifteen. Yep, fifteen. Copy that, replace that. And I'm gonna save drawing styling. Or arc styling, I'd like to say. Just has to split this up so it's easier to read. Arc dims for short for dimensions. Yep. See how that looks. Now I did want to change the offset so the offset isn't quite that so I'm going to use stroke width even though it's not meant for this but it should work. That should give us lines right next to the old ones. Very small there but that's okay. Now we want to do this now 30 odd times. Cool. That's exactly what I was going for. I'm quite impressed with myself, I don't know about you. Uh, but yeah, no, I think that satisfies uh, what I was going for. I was alluding to the 3D forms that aren't really there. It does sort of look like it pops because of those brighter and darker colours. The circular forms uh, repeated to the left and the right with lighter darkened colours. So, yep. Intermittent concentric arcs, and I used the first image palette. So I'm going to call this my creation. And and that's what that is. Cool. And I can take away the, that from that. Now you can also add some reasoning behind your choices if you'd like. Um, if you really want to back yourself up and you know make sure your tutor understands or your tutor who's marking you understands what you were going for. So the first image's palette was more interesting than monochrome. This is a, this is a terrible uh, sort of justification for picking a color palette, but you know, it's still it's better than nothing. Of course, if you wanted to choose your own palette and say, you could say something like, "The first image reminded me of kind of like." Uh, office cubicles and then you could say so I got some office cubicle photos and oops not subical and color picked out the palette This should remind the viewer about office cubicles. <laughs> uh, just so you know, um, well, obviously I didn't do this, but if I'd written this, I would. Um, so what that would look like is going to my search engine, finding some office cubicle photos and, and using my color picker, similar to how I did with the other one. So justifications, just so you know, because you will need this going forward, uh, a justification contains three parts. It contains your uh, explanation. That's the first part. That is what you did. 
the second part sorry I'll number these oh, I use colon too much let's, let's get rid of that part two and part three I'll space them all out now so after your explanation you've got your motivation that's where you talk about how how you went about it what you were trying to achieve so what were you trying to achieve a oh, terrible speller <laughs> oops uh, and then three the third part is your rationale oh just so you know if you want to um, use control to get around you can skip entire words in a sentence another little shortcut so I'm holding control and hitting the arrow keys all right so rationale this is the reason why you th think that what you did will work and that's explaining why you think your motivation will be effective and sort of backing that up all right so that's justifications keep that in mind maybe refer to it maybe write it down yourself anyway so I've kind of done a very bad job of justifying why I picked these colors but sometimes it's not easy to justify aesthetic choices and that's okay um, it's not okay for getting great marks but it is better than nothing always good to justify uh, I think that's pretty much it so that's gone a little bit longer than I wanted to do but I think the result is good we've added sort of enough and I feel like this would be a pretty good mark answer um, now when you're doing the quiz you'll have both questions so question two try to split it up so they take about an hour each but if you really feel like one's kind of done so with this one I feel like this is kind of done so I'd move on to this one and, and I'd have a little bit more time to work on this one um, yeah so do what you like try to pick your favorite answer first something that you can really work with and attempt that one first um, I hope that's been good for you guys um, and I wish you good luck in the test Okay, I'm back. Uh, something really silly of me. I forgot to show you how to submit your code. Alright, so first off, I've got this. I'm going to Control A, so everything is cop is selected. And I'm going to copy that, Control C. Make sure you don't need Control X because sometimes it can remove it but not put it on your clipboard. So Control C, make sure it's all there. And paste that in here. And that should give me the code. So when your markers come through, they'll look at your answer, they'll copy all of this in. You can also use this chance to, this opportunity to fix up some of the uh, spelling mistakes. Um, yeah. And then your, cop your tutor marking you will just copy all of this. They'll have a read of all your comments and things like that, and they'll see how you did. And then once you're ready, you can go down here and hit submit quiz. I'm going to click that. You have one unanswered question. Well, I'm going to leave that one unanswered because I'm only going to go through one question of the quiz. Otherwise, this video would be too long. All right. Now I can see my answer and everything below that. If something did go terribly wrong, you could probably send a message to your tutor with the code that you did intend to send to them, but you want to do it. We will be able to see what time you submitted the quiz. So if you do it, you know, half an hour later we'll know that you didn't do it within the time that you're allotted for the quiz. So just keep that in mind. Alright, thank you, and hope, hope you do well in the quiz.